Hey everybody, this is Jonathan Schranz, and if you're new to this channel, if you've never been here before, what I tend to do is I try to find brand new openings, which oftentimes are new gambits. So if you're into that kind of thing, maybe you could subscribe to the channel, that'd be totally cool, that would help me out. Maybe you've been here before and you haven't subscribed yet. That'd be cool, help me out. Today I want to be taking a look at a gambit that can come right out of the Sicilian. And we're calling this one the Beaver Gambit. And this one actually might be a winner. I did a stream earlier today, and results were excellent. We'll actually get to that in a moment. But this comes out of the E6 Sicilian. Against everything else, I was having kind of really good success with some of these C3 lines. But I was wondering to myself, is there anything I can do that is creative and interesting in these lines? Well, specifically against one move that can be played, black actually has two main options in this position. Knight f6 and d5 are by far the most logical moves. This gambit actually occurs in the knight to f6 line, which for whatever reason, I seem to be facing most often. So I was trying to look for a unique solution to this position. And here's what I came up with. e5, attacking the knight, knight to d5. So far, this is uh, tons of theory. Lots of games have been played in this variation. And I came up with something rather unique that's actually not one of any of these moves that's currently being suggested in the Lee Chess database. The idea I came up with, well, I actually should back up just for a second and show kind of how we got there. Uh, I, I began with looking at some of the sidelines. In particular, I was looking at the move pawn to c4, where despite what it says here, knight to b4 was actually, um, theoretically from an engine standpoint, a tough nut to crack. And then I said, well, wait a minute. I still have ideas of pushing this pawn to c4, but what happens if I begin with b4? And this introduces the beaver. Um, this actually has been played, I guess, a few times on, uh, on leechess.org here. That's the database that we're using. But I have a lot of brand new ideas and clever traps that is possible after this really weird, mysterious looking move. But the more I've played it, uh, the more it seems to actually really be working. So what is the point? Well, now after C takes uh, B4, we play C4. We kick the knight away. And here, there's already a lot of traps. Black is now already forced to play an only move. And a lot of people have actually gone wrong. The biggest trap in this position is knight to B6. This looks like the most natural square. If you're a Sicilian player and you need to retreat your knight, almost everybody is going to go back to b6. Well, here comes d4, and what we are going to notice is that there's actually a major problem with the black position. And that is, if you play one of the main moves, which is either d6 or d5, both of these moves are pretty much just losing on the spot. Uh, for example, d6 or if d5, either one is going to be met with a capture on the d6 square. And here you can see why this is an issue. After bishop takes d6, there's c5, and this is just going to be winning a piece for white. Uh, for example, you pretty much have to sacrifice at this point, and I did have one game that I played earlier today on stream, and it went takes takes, and after knight to a4, which was played in the game, uh, I believe I played like most people have played in this game, bishop to b5, which doesn't throw away the game or anything, but stronger is actually just to defend this pawn, maneuver this knight to b3, the rook can come to c1, and uh, white is just absolutely winning, crushing in a, a position like this. So that's the first trap. And it's probably very likely to succeed if somebody hasn't seen this opening before. Uh, another move that I've seen in this position, one of the, the higher rated players that actually played me on the stream attempted this move, knight to f4, which is actually also a pretty bad move. And I got a tremendous position after d4 attacking the knight, forcing it to retreat and now h4, trying to chase it down. Uh, and this was really cool because after h5, bishop to d3, we got a very amazing, fantastic position. If I uh, remember right, it was knight to c6, takes, takes, d5. And we got this pretty amazing position, knight to e7, bishop to g5, queen to b6, d6. Uh, you can see exactly what's happening here. Look at all of these pieces that uh, are just trapped out of the game. And whatever you do, please ignore the result of the game. I, uh, this is kind of what happened on the stream. I had kind of a, a, bad, a bad result in that every single game I was winning straight out of the opening and I had some difficulties. Let's not talk about it. If they play knight to f4 uh, early on, you're, you're obviously going to get a great position. 
Okay, so <laughs> we uh, we head back here for just a moment. What is Black actually supposed to do? They capture you play here. The the main move, the actually the critical move here is to play knight to c7. And I will let you know the computer evaluation. It is a gambit you're down upon. The computer thinks it's uh, it's a little bit less than minus one. Knight to c7. Now the main point is we're going to be playing d4. And from here, we are going to see some very interesting options. Uh, basically, they have to play d6 or d5, and our response can be the same by white to either move. If they play something else, if they decline, I don't know, knight to c6, well, they start to actually run into a little bit of problems after the move pawn to d5. And yeah, I mean, if the knight is, ha is forced to retreat or anything like that, it's not going to end very well. So d6 or d5, they both can be met the same way. Now here, I actually want to propose three different moves that you can play with the white pieces. Two are kind of like dubious trappy lines that have a lot of appeal, especially if you're like an attacking player, um, because a lot of the moves you need to find are incredible surprises. But the main and the safest move is E takes D6. And this also could be played, of course, if they play pawn to D5, E takes D6. This is going to be sort of the safe and most principled way for white to continue from this position. Now, this is all like quite brand new, but one problem is bishop to uh, d3. Here, there's kind of an interesting point that black needs to wonder if it's possible to castle here. Very often when we see this setup, you know, you gotta wonder with the black pieces, is there going to be a Greek gift? Is this something that is actually playable for black? Um, and as it turns out, you actually can castle with the black pieces in this position. And if you go for the Greek gift, which I did attempt on, on stream, um, this is a little bit better for black. This is something like minus one, but I don't actually see a direct win or anything for white. So it is actually possible for black to castle, but it's something that they need to worry about. And so a lot of players might be reluctant to go for this, especially when you see knight to g5 coming in. Okay, and the obvious point of the Greek gift is that if you go back to one of these squares, you will end up getting checkmated. Um, there's no real time to run away. Something like this is just going to be a typical devastating uh, Greek gift scenario. But the critical line is king to g6. The king actually runs up the board, and a few things could be tried. You can try to hunt down the king. You can play h4. You can play queen to d3. Queen to f3 was an interesting computer suggestion. But you will get something like this, uh, where f5 is actually a game that uh, somebody played against me. And here I had the opportunity to get a winning position. This is not the correct move for black. I think after king to f6, here I just went here and won the material. Uh, but h6 is actually a surprisingly strong move in this position. Uh, if we flip this guy on now, uh, something like you know g6 or rook to h8. Um, it's just, it's pretty simple. Like it's actually kind of funny. It, the computer just says, you know, you can even just maneuver your pieces into the game. And this is just absolutely winning for white. Uh, so what black actually needs to do, and we can flip this on just so we can all kind of see where we're at, is something like king to f6, where you can settle for just trying to win this exchange. And there's some room to try to find attacking plans for white. But objectively, this Greek gift um, is not going to be successful. So instead, in this position, if they do end up castling, uh, again, since this is so unexplored, there's plenty of room to come up with brand new ideas, whether it's you just want to castle, bring your pieces out to kind of normal squares, and you get you always are going to have these bishops raging at the king. So even though the computer thinks black is better, I mean, black is up a pawn, so computers are, are very happy, there's a lot of room for improvement. And one interesting idea that was suggested to me by my chat during the, uh, during the stream today is pawn to h4, and this actually sets up a Greek gift. So for example, now the Greek gift would just totally be successful if allowed, and it has to do with the fact that this pawn is closer. If you can rip open these dark squares, king to f6, h6, uh, if you can get these dark squares weakened, because for example, if you have to take, this is something quite, quite brutal, uh, knight to f7 is going to be a huge threat. The point is, you've weakened all the dark squares, 
takes bishop to g5. Something like this is massively strong for white. So white is very close to having the Greek gift set up. h4 is an interesting idea, or just developing the pieces, castling, and playing slowly for some sort of attack is really nice. Black would love to have uh, a knight on f6. This would keep him nice and safe. So if he does castle, he's got to be worried about a lot of different things. Also, there are a couple of other interesting options uh, for those that want to live a little bit more dangerously. After d6, there are a couple of unexplored options, and uh, they have to do with bishop to d3 and even bishop to g5. There are tons of traps and crazy moves that is sort of computer-only analysis. So to get a little bit more of that, I actually want to jump into the stream. Uh, it was a really excellent stream, so here's just uh, some excerpts from it. This is me playing a couple games of chess and then doing the analysis afterwards. So... I hope you enjoy, and again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like this kind of stuff, let me know by subscribing, leaving some comments, hitting like, and uh, yeah, enjoy the stream. And now we're going to move on. Beaver Gambits, Milk the Funk. Milk the Funk. Have we played already? Uh, did I play or did I want to play Milk the Funk? I don't think I played Milk the Funk, but maybe. So here we go. This is the Beaver Gambit for anybody just joining. Also, there better not be a Beaver Gambit. Beaver Gambit. Air code. All right. Looks like there's no Beaver Gambit in chess. All right. Perfect. Uh, here we go. C3. And here it is. B for Beaver. B4. And yeah, it has a lot of tricks and traps. We've seen some early mistakes. Milk the Funk has been here, though. So this is the first one I want to try. Please take on E5. Please take on E5. Boom! This sacrifice, my D-pawn, is hanging, allowing a double attack. This, this is going to be... We're, we're entering into some some dubious territory here. I am basically saying, if you take my D-pawn, Knight takes F7! Knight takes F7! All the rooks are hanging. My knight's hanging. Here we go! Here we go! Feel the power of the beaver! Hey, Pierre. What? <laughs> what indeed? This is the beaver. Don't mess with the beaver. Look at your queen. Your queen is so sad. Uh, now, somehow, he didn't play the right move, because I don't think anybody can, without prep, play the right move. So that means I'm winning better. I don't know what it means. There, I have to show you guys. There's, there's this black has to play, like, amazing. Uh, and this is not it. So the way what actually happened here is we traded the rooks and I stay on the initiative because all of my pieces are out and the black king is stuck in the center. So boom, this is another trap in the beaver gambit. You mess with the beaver, you get the teeth, as they famously say. Beavers are probably not that aggressive though. I imagine they're just hardworking folk. You know, they're just they're just good people. The beavers. They deserve a little bit more respect for everything that they contribute. This was just invented today, so the course isn't available yet. But uh, Melk the Funk allowed some of the fun. This is this is thanks Melk for actually playing along and going right into one of the the most insane lines that you can play. Because uh, Knight takes e5. I'm actually I'm horribly concerned about giving some of the answers away. Uh, I, I don't know if I if I actually should yet, but yeah, it has this this beautiful idea. Queen takes d4, knight takes f7. And this is not the move. Queen takes a1. I don't know. There's there's a move here for black. You did. Here there's a move for black. So you did mess up, technically. But you cannot play the best move here. You cannot play the best move here. It, it's impossible. Ah, there's too much stuff hanging to actually play the best move here. And even if you do, this is another... What I love about this position is if you do somehow find the best move here, which is impossible and none of you ever will, um, it's still, like... It's still pretty playable. It's, like, minus one. Like, the computer thinks it's minus two. It freaks out a lot, but it's it's actually seriously playable. Uh, I will entertain some ideas. Let me actually switch over to here, because I'm, I'm going to... This is the, uh, the code that I'm secretly putting the engine on, and I don't want you guys to know. Uh, so right now, Stockfish thinks it's about minus two. I, I think it's really closer to like minus one, but it's not there yet. There's literally one move. So what was played in the game actually just loses. 
And if you do go back, this was correct. So all of this was correct. I'm winning. Something happened, and then I won. All right, that's how we're going to remember this game. Winning, the rest of the game happened, and then I won. That's that's the takeaway. Um, there is one move here. So what has... Suggest moves. I actually would be very interested. Bishop to c5. This uh, actually has a, a horrible, tragic flaw, unfortunately. Bishop to c5 looks super... This is pretty amazing. You threaten checkmate in the midst of everything kind of being hanging. But bishop to e3. Oh, a lot of cheaters in the chat. A lot of cheaters in the chat. No way did anybody come up with g6. The only move for an advantage, you know. Uh, let's 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 look it up here. No way did any human brain come up with g6. The only move to avoid a horrible, <laughs> horrible fate. Nobody's. I guess you can play rook g8. Your thing's attacked. You move your thing away. Uh, but this is all bad. G6 only move, only move. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I think queen to c2 was the most interesting. I looked at here. Um, I looked at h4. I think I looked at just castling, but I think queen to c2 was the most interesting. You can kind of, you can get some uh, crazy position, or maybe it was just takes first. I think maybe takes first. Takes and queen c2 was interesting. Oh, this loses to knight to g6. Oh, even this is tricky. Wow, if I take your rook, you cannot take my rook because of knight takes g6. This is death. We have bishop g5 coming. Um, so you have to take here. And then is it queen c2? At, at some point you can play like queen c2, sacking this thing. Uh, bishop f4 is apparently in the line. I can't even remember what I looked at. It must have been queen to c2 here. Where, yeah, you're going to play b3. And, and yeah, you pretty much, you have to play b3. This introduces the idea of bishop to b4. So the queen takes. And now bishop to g7. Amidst all of this, black is going to play bishop to g7. Are you joking me? Are you joking? So this this is impossible. Nobody's playing b3 and bishop to g7. This is impossible. You know? And if they don't, they're busto. If they don't, they're busto. But that's not my only trick. I have a, I have a couple more tricks. That's just trick number one, just to whet the appetite. I have another trick, just in case g6 is discovered. Was anybody here that knows the opening and can allow the beaver that wants to play a game? Chestosterone is challenging King of the Hill. Nice try. Nice try. Oh, I'm going to trap the streamer. King of the Hill. He's not going to notice. Oh, good prank. We got him. Everybody's laughing at the streamer. Not today, buddy. Not today. We got beaver content to make here. We don't have time for this King of Hill nonsense stuff. Good one. Good one. All right. I don't know if improving every day is in the chat but okay we're off to a good start maybe this will be a beaver e6 e6 that's what we're farming perfect beaver gambit let's see what improving every day has come up with all right good 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 we got a heavy theoretical battle and now bishop d3 all right we've seen the mighty power of knight takes e5 we've seen the might we've seen the beaver boom bishop to g5 is this an idea boom knight takes e5 what is up what is up that's how we do it boom boom <laughs> no swearing on youtube videos I don't have to blur it out. Put bad words. What if my kids watch? Boom! Knight takes e5. <laughs> oh, gives up. You're not lost. You're not lost. Uh, I'm getting a call. That actually eh, it might be important. But we just played knight takes e5. This is it, guys. This is the revolution we've been waiting for. Black's not lost, though. You have one move. Who can find it? This is the most glorious moment. The beaver is a winner. I believe in the beaver. Who else is a believer in the beaver? Also, it's not horrible time. All right, wait, wait. This actually might be a serious phone call. And this is this was the prep. F6 is actually correct. 
F6 is actually correct. Who's got the move? Who's got the move? Um, you, you're fine here. This looks brilliant, and it looks amazing. But who's got the move? And this is, again, I, I don't know how people could actually find this. You, you know this or you don't. If you don't know how to defend against the beaver, you're dead. Oh, now they're texting me? <laughs> Stop. I'm trying to do some jobs here. Uh, so queen... Well, so it's black to move, right? So I've just taken on e5. f6 is actually correct. f6 is the move. This is correct. Knight takes e5. Um, so g5 is impossible. Okay, you, you gotta be joking me here. Are you joking me? I answer and they hang up. <laughs> What's going on? Who's got the move? Who's got the move? John. No way. No way. G6 only move. So part of the, the reason is you, you have to block against this check. So G6 is actually the, the only move here. And this is good for black. Let's We can reveal everything. We can reveal the truth to the good people here. Uh, but f6 is totally correct. So this is just, again, it's playing for this dubious trick. Uh, we've seen me play this, which I think is actually really interesting. Um, if you don't want to go for any of this, you just take. So the real move is to take. You get you get kind of the boring position that we keep transposing into. Uh, but there are some interesting options. Okay, that's... I'm turning my phone off. That's... That's... You're ruining my life. Uh, so taking is the real option. This is kind of one of the fun lines to sack this deep on. Uh, Fortnite takes f2 and a bunch of complications. And another idea is after this capture, bishop to g5, f6, knight takes e5, where g6 will somehow miraculously hold. Um, but yeah, if you take this thing, then you're just dead. The queen comes in, there's no g6, we're sacking, and this is death. It's over. The game is over. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought this was actually another another cool idea to keep in mind. But yeah, you go back and the game goes on. I think bishop e7 was the best move on deeper depth. I always analyze these much deeper than people on YouTube ever realize. So like, oh, you're just looking at this. Well, I've already kind of had a look at deeper depth and you have to go back. And you play this position where at least black has kind of moved like a bunch of pawns, isn't really safe on either side of the board. And you know, maybe this is the most dubious way for white to play. And if you call me one more time,